meeting of the Wellfleet Planning Board is open. Any announcements from anyone? Okay. Cam uh, got resigned. I'm sorry? Cam got resigned in case you missed it. <laughs> Thank you. Bad choice. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, approval not required 1065 State Highway. I think I saw Don Poole's name. Yes, Mr. Parent, right here. Oh, there you are, Don. Okay. Um, you want to make any presentation or is it pretty open and shut? <laughs> I think it's open and shut. No, basically, we just want to remove the interior property line. Should we go forward with any planning at the site? We just don't want to have to deal with setbacks. All right. Um, for a point of clarification for the board, because you've got the plan in front of you, um, that was the plan submitted by the applicant initially. Um, I reviewed it quickly. And the main thing I saw was that generally in the past, sorry, not generally, uh, on all approval not required plans that we catch, we require, well, we require a disclaimer um, stating that signing of this does not um, and endorsement is not granting any zoning regulations or anything of that nature. Um, so Don, I think you added that wording to the new plan that was submitted on Monday. Uh, yes, I did, Jerry. I took the note from the Truro uh, Planning Board. It says planning board endorsement of this plan indicates only that the plan is not a subdivision under MGL chapter 41 sections 81 L and does not indicate that a lot is buildable or that it meets zoning health or general bylaw requirements. Okay, so just so all of you know that that disclaimer was put on there, nothing else changed as far as that plan was submitted. I did ask them for a new one, rather than all of a sudden get to this meeting. And I know, there were, I know at least two people that would catch the fact that that disclaimer was not on there. Um, so I asked them to do that. And that's the plan that would be in the office when we go to sign. So with that, is there any discussion, members of the planning board on the plan itself? Any well, questions? yeah. Um, yeah. Right, I'd have to say, Jerry, David. all that being said, yes, all that being said, I don't think that if nothing has changed other than that disclaimer, I would still like that building lot line, excuse me, the uh, building setback line removed because that's not accurate. That's only a 50 foot setback if the building is wood and the building's not even there. That's from a prior petition. I don't mind the existing foundation, but to insinuate that those are the building line setbacks is not accurate because it's a hundred feet at route six. You know, it was granted the 50 foot variance because it was going to be a wood building. I sat on that case. So I'd like those lines removed because it gives a graphic misrepresentation. Although there's a disclaimer on there, nobody reads the fine print. <laughs> Even on a little box with the blue pill, nobody reads the fine print. All right, David. Um, Don, you want to weigh in on that? Actually, I don't have any opinion on it. I'd ask Ben to, to respond to that. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, this Ben. <laughs> ben. Hello, everybody. No, I, I don't. I, we don't have a problem moving the uh, building setback lines from the from the plan. Okay. Um, and, and to go one step further, we could. Well, the, actually, the zoning the zoning statements on the right, I think, just demonstrate to the board that the law is compliant with zoning. So I think that probably should stay. Yeah, the lot size and lot frontage. Yes. So I, I, you know, I think we're more than happy to resubmit the plan for endorsement without the building setback lines. Okay. That's fine. Um, any other discussion on that issue? So, what is the setback though? There shouldn't that be? Shouldn't the setback be on there? It shouldn't. It shouldn't no. even be on there because it, they be change. I agree with David. It shouldn't even okay. be on there. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. 
D- D- David, because that was it was that structure was granted a 50 foot setback because it was going to be a wood faced building. Right. There's no building there. There's just a there's a foundation. Right. So to say that that's the building setback, it's a hundred normally, is sort of a mis a graphic misrepresentation and shouldn't be on there to confuse the zoning board because it's it's a visual thing, you know. Yeah, got it. So, so. it is a hundred foot setback, though. Yes. Correct. Okay. In eliminating eliminating David's point, I mean eliminating the setback lines isn't changing anything, but it is making the plan certainly clearer for anybody to, to, to pick up and look at. Yeah. They'll see the foundation which is existing, but other than that, they they won't have the few of the lines on those kind of things the better off they are. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, is it the, and is it the zoning board that has to deal with the issue of the proposed screening and all of that for to be to be done around the up between Route Six and the property? I, that I think, could be a condition of this, the special permit. Uh, well, yeah. I think at this point, David Mead, Fox, I think that is not at this moment yeah. really a discussion for whether or not it's a <clears throat> division and the submission of an approval not required plan. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of mixing apples with oranges. No, I realize, just trying to get some clarification. Uh, but certainly wait about five minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can uh, do that. So we can do two things, board members. I can take a vote um, with to approve with a new plan brought in with no setback lines, or we can move it to the next meeting and wait and approve it then. Which would what would you like to um, Don? Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Uh, and I can drop off an original at the, at the town hall uh, this week for you, another uh, mylar and a couple copies. I'll have it there this week. I don't know if you want to drop off what's there at, at our office or leave it out for us to pick up somewhere, but I'll have the original back up to you this week. Okay. Based on that, what would the board members like to do? Approve it tonight, subject to those changes being made on the mylar that's, that yeah. ends up at town hall? Yeah, sure. Or do you want to wait and put it off till the April meeting? I'd prefer to wait until the April meeting. Because? Could, could I have a, I mean, I think that this is the kind of the easy part of the discussion about this parcel of land, right? Because approval is not required because <clears throat> it's taking a former subdivision and putting it into one piece of property. So this is not you know, there are other issues, but maybe this one can easily be uh, approved. I don't know. Okay, you I'd can't still like to see it ahead of time. You can't mix. This is this is standing on a loan. This is an approval not required. Forget whatever else is on the agenda tonight. Does not matter. This is an approval not required plan on a piece of property. Um, truly end of conversation. So the real discussion, Bonnie, would be, you know, as as David Rao has said, he'd kind of like to wait until the April 4th meeting to take it up. Nothing's going to change except those are, those lines are going to be erased. So uh, well, Jerry, yeah. bring that up because we've tried to be consistent with other surveyors to do that, is to get the plan right, come back and bring it to us and not rubber stamp it ahead of time. We've done that in the past with two other two other surveyors, and they've, they've they've come back. You know, they didn't have a problem with that, but it's, they didn't try to push it and just ram it through ahead of time. Right. I think okay. that's in the name of consistently consistency. We should do that. That's all. For the chair. Yes. Um, this is Ben. Um, yeah, and I, I I agree with David. But you know, we're in a COVID environment. The members aren't sitting in a room available to sign a plan right now. Um, and if the board puts it off, then I have to ring in at the next meeting to make sure there are no issues to be addressed there. And it just costs the applicant more money. So I would ask that the board just move and vote to endorse with that change. Mr. Chairman. Go on. If, I, if I might. Uh, and I, I would just ask that the planning board include that in your regulations so that uh, surveyors are aware of that ahead of time, uh, similar to what Turo does. Make a part of your regulations, but then we won't have to do this back and forth. So far as the, the note... 
Yeah. Okay. Um, that's 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 a that's a good point. Um, Thank you. Any other members want to weigh in on this? I'd rather, quite honestly, just get it off and erasing the lines and having you walk in and sign to me is just it's simple and get it over with. What? Why put it on another meeting? Oh, hello. Yeah. Am I there? Uh, Alfred. I apologize. I mean, this muting pro. Anyways. Um, Every time we sign one of these, they come back and bother us. I think that it should be done properly. I think the fact that the setback line is incorrect for what our zoning book says. Um, I wouldn't vote for this tonight. That's my personal opinion. Because the setback line that's in there states something. I realize the plan states it's not for zoning, but it's very clear that we have a stamped plan that says that that's where the setback line is. The setback line could be there, but since this zone has multiple setbacks, depending on what the zoning board can grant you, I don't believe we should be voting on this until it's correct. Okay. So do you mean, Alfred, we would wait until after zoning board action? No, we would wait to make sure the plan came back properly. Okay. okay. All right. Because this plan, as it says right now, should never, in my opinion, should have never had only one building setback line on it. If they were going to show them on it, they should have showed all of them with a delineation to say why you can get to that. This one only shows one setback line, which needs a special permit to get to that. That's why I have a problem with it. And the, set, the, the zoning board may or may not, because I can't speak for them, may or may not grant that line. So that line may not, not, may not even be realistic, or it could be where they're going. We don't know that. Let's get the plan to show what we do know at this point. I either take them all out or we'll put them all in. And, I, you know, I think that to put the 100-foot one in, I, I, I'm not asking them to do that. I think they'd be better off just pulling them out. Because the zoning board could make some determination that's not been made yet. Well, it's, it's being made by this plan, in my opinion, possibly. For the chair. I'm sorry, I gotta, you know, I'm not, I'm not going here to the air, but let's just say, and this is, this is a learning experience for the board. And I'm not taking it out on Ben or, or, or Don. You know, if, if the applicant chose to say, no, I'm not going to take the, um, setback line off. We have no choice in the matter. We either sign it or we don't sign it. But within 21 days, it gets approved because the state of Massachusetts has said point blank, you're not determining whether or not the information on the plan is correct. You're determining whether or not it has sufficient frontage area and has, has access and it's not a subdivision. That is all absolutely all there could be all kinds of mistakes on this plan that's not our jurisdiction to say we can or we will or will not sign it because all we are do doing is endorsing this as it is not a subdivision and that it meets the frontage as i said that's per law now i think the applicant is willing and is saying to the board okay um, we'll pull the we'll pull the setbacks off. We put the clarification and the disclaimer on the plan for you. And I think all they're asking is, okay, can we get it signed uh, when we bring it in and it's corrected? Will you guys sign it and move on? But I'd like to have interrupt those you, Jerry. On there, and we can't do anything about it, Alfred. Yeah, no. but we we don't have to sign it, Jerry. No, we, we do not. not. We then, don't have to sign it, and that's, and that's not our problem. That becomes the applicant's problem. That's why the state says that if we don't want to sign it, we don't have to. That is correct. That, we can wait the 21 that, days. That's why the applicant usually is willing to fix the mistakes that may or may not be legal or binding according to the law, but the law also allows us not to sign it if we think that it's not correct. Is that not correct? That through the chair. Yes, Ben. Look, the law allows uh, to, to Alfred, the law allows the, 
planning board to refuse an endorsement if the plan doesn't meet the requirements of 81L or 81X. It's not, it's not whether you, you think there's information on there that you don't like, but this is form over substance. Look, we're here tonight. There's no snowstorm tonight. We have a quorum tonight, which isn't always the case. And the applicant has very clearly said they'll submit a plan without, without the line. I think all the board has to do is move and vote to endorse the plan properly submitted without the setback plan. And, I, and I, you get to the same place you are tonight without making us come back another time. If I could follow up, Terry. Uh, thank you. I, you know, I can explain the setback line on there as a mistake. I made that mistake when I read the chart. I didn't notice that the when it has the areas and you go to the, the, the setback regulations, there's a little offset. I just went straight down the C column. And it go, you know, but when you look at the chart, it's actually offset a little to the left. So that was my mistake. I misread that. I just looked at it now and I can see, oh, I see now that the two are offset in the bylaw. And that was just my simple mistake. And I'll take those lines off the plan. Had I read that correctly, that line would be 100 feet. But I'm happy to take them off. Where, I, where's the offset in this that you're talking about? If you look at the planning board, uh, the bylaws of the town, the use regulations, just a table. The top of it is the area regulations. Then below that, it has the dimensional setbacks. And they added a column at the end. I think it's MSD. And it, it pushed everything a little to the left. So when I went straight down the C column for commercial, I didn't notice that I was in the wrong column there. Well, if you go down, I got the book open. And if you go under the C directly, it says 100. If you go one to the right or one to the left, it says 50. No, I see what he's saying, Alfred. Look up, look on that chart because you're on it. If you look down at C, the top two is 5.4.1, area in frontage. Under C, it's 40,000 square feet with 200 feet of frontage. Yeah. When you go down to 5.3, uh, 4.2, the setback on C2 is 50, and it's directly below commercial, whereas the commercial is offset to the left by yeah. one row, it's 100. So <laughs> what he's saying is he followed right down with his finger from C right down caught 50 and put 50 on the plan. I can see That's it. exactly right, Jerry. Thank you. I, that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, with all due respect to, to Don, um, Chet and Dick wouldn't have made it because they know they've done so much work in the town of Wellfleet, but we're dealing with engineers who haven't done that kind of work. So, uh, you know, it happens. But my point is, is, is simply that's not in my mind, verification to, to put it over to another meeting. I don't even know if we're going to have a meeting in April. Then, the, then it's on my shoulders to sign it um, alone. I would really prefer just to see if the board will, will move on and just say, okay, fine, we'll change it. Um, if, if he says, and if I'm notified when the plan is in town hall that, uh, or that it's available for signature. I'll immediately see it, look at it. The rest of you can look at it. And if the lines are gone, we already see that the disclaimer is there. We sign it and we're done. Yeah, can we just, can we call a vote? Yeah, uh, but I can't call a vote without a motion. I, I, I move that we, uh, that we approve the approval not require required with two changes the disclaimer and the removal of the setback line okay i second, second it i'll second it Oops. okay any discussion seeing none all those in favor? Four. Opposed? Aye. Opposed. Okay, four to two. Um, Don, bring the plan in. Um, town Hall, Rebecca will give, give the planning board notice when it's there and we'll come in and sign it. And she'll notify all the plan, um, planning board members um, when it's there. And if I'm, 
I, I will try my best to be the first one there. And if I see a problem, I'll give you a holler, but I don't anticipate any. Okay. And thank you very much. All right. That was the easy one, ladies and gentlemen, members. <laughs> uh, Just getting warmed one. up. I'm sorry? Just getting warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David Mead. Um, all right. The next one in members is a is a new one on me. It hasn't really happened before. I'll be up front. Um, at least not in my memory over 28 years. The um, Board of Appeals has sent an application by the applicant on 1065 Route 6. Specifically, if I can understand it, it has they're not looking for our input on the application to reverse the building inspector decision on um, stop order. That's really not what they sent it over to us for. What they did is there was an application before the Board of Appeals um, on 1065 Route 6 for as the application reads, and I think you all have it, is basically for um, 8.42 of our bylaws, which is bulk storage, open storage, etc., and a special permit under 5.4.13 for multiple principal uses, which are allowed in the C2 and C district. Um, the bulk storage would be one of them by special permit. The contractor's yard, which is a right, but still a use, would be the second. So I spoke to the chair of the Board of Appeals, Sharon Inger, when I got this sent over. And I said, well, Sharon, I said, there's, there's no significant, at least the paperwork doesn't show that this development is significant impact hitting 10 parking spaces, you're sending it over to the planning board. What would you like from us? We haven't seen this before. And she said, Jerry, she said, it's just a matter of um, uh, the Board of, of Appeals voted that um, they felt it was a significant project and they would like the planning board to review, look it over, look over the zoning bylaws, give them any guidance we can, but both chairs were quite clear with each other. The board of appeals is the special permit granting authority in this matter. The planning board is not. The planning board um, is simply a board that has been requested for any input they care to give, not whether or not the permit should or should not be granted. That is not our jurisdiction or nor is it our discussion. It is what maybe the planning board feels um, uses are being triggered by and within the applicant and the use of and the way a contractor of this nature would operate a particular business on a location and how it applies to our zoning bylaws. Um, but we both agreed, and I said I would certainly reiterate that to the planning board. I'm sure they are aware of it, but we, I would remind them that we are not really here to discuss the merits of the application. We are simply here to give 
some help to the board and some guidance, but they, the Board of Appeals, are the special permit granting authority. Jerry? David Mead. Um, I understand what you're saying, and I understand the distinction, but I, it's a little, there's a little gray area, though, because if, there, if the request was that they want to know what we think, I understand they make the decision, but it sounds like they're asking us to give them some uh, counsel, some advice, our thoughts. I think they're, it's not, well, we have to give them what we think, but it's not a matter of whether or not we think a permit should be granted or not granted. That's, that's, a, that's a decision making process that is in the Board of Appeals lab. Our, dis, our, our, our review is to, and I'll give you an example, David. Um, I went through quickly and I'm, you know, and, but this is just for all of you. I think, for example, when the application went out to you, I asked Rebecca very quickly off the top of my head to have you look at some definitions, board members look at some definitions. For example, bulk storage open, refresh yourself on what that defin definition is. And that's what the applicant is, is going under. Uh, contractor yard, read the definition. The first one, bulk storage is by permit, contractor yard is by right. Um, but then I said, also look at transport terminal definition and any other definitions in the zoning bylaw that you may feel that this particular use may trigger. And I think David Mead, I think that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, certainly, <clears throat> I think it's within the question that the Board of Planning Board can answer that, that you brought up a little earlier on, on the setback restoration that you know, make sure you look at that, cite the chapter and verse or something of that nature. I yeah. think that's more or less where they're going. Okay. Did that, do, do we get on the same wavelength on that one, David, or do you still have a question? Yeah, no, I think so. I think we won't know for sure until we start <laughs> dive into it a little bit. And, and, and if there needs to be some uh, a limit set of whatever, sir, that's fine. But, um, okay. Um, well, Jerry, I think they should, they should start by looking at the district objectives and reading that. That was one it's of my, absolutely, David, that was actually yep. was a couple of those things that were, and, uh, were on it. Yeah, I looked at and, and understand that that definition has a limitation. Okay. That limitation is that we prohibit heavy industry. Look at that definition and see if this activity is really a contractor's yard or which is a, you know, is, is it that, or is it really that it fits the definition of heavy industry, noise, dust, vibration. That's what you have to do. You have to identify what it is. I don't know if it's a contractor's yard or if it's heavy industry, that's for the board to decide, but it could fit either one of those categories possibly. Right. And as you know, we prohibit heavy industry in Wellfleet for a reason, for noise, congestion, and traffic. So they have to look at, look, weigh all those things and it's within their jurisdiction to say, no, it's heavy industry. We don't want it. Or it's also within their jurisdiction to say, no, this is simply a contractor's yard. But it's not. Right now, the applicant's only giving one definition, contractor's yard. If you look under the definitions, it equally fits heavy industry, and more likely so. So they should look into that definition too. So, but um, David, if I may, yeah. Jerry. Uh, yeah, if you're uh, yes, at, Alfred. If you're going to look at contractors on the thing, and you read it, um, it's pretty vocal in stating what's allowed in the thing for parking of wheeled. Equipment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that means it's going to have tires on it. Yeah. 
and if it doesn't have tires on it, does that mean that it's still allowed, or does that put it into the next category? Well, that's a good question, like a track machine, because that's not street legal, and, you know, it's not it's, building related. It is, but, but it's not a building contractor, per se. It's, it's no, heavy excavation. You, no, you could, have a, you could have an excavator with wheels on it. You could. No, they do make them. I mean, my question is, okay. why does it say wheeled in there? There's a reason for that. You're right, because they didn't want the track machine. That's. I mean, I'm not making that. I, I well, think possibly I, they might not want the track. Yeah. Okay. I see where you're going with that. That's why they they were clear with that definition that it had wheels. Yes, they were very clear that the equipment was to be wheeled. Yep. Because the noise generated from a track machine is more than a rubber tired one. Because it's it's quite clear on the end of it. Or parking of wheeled equipment. Hmm. Mm. Uh, Jerry, Bonnie has her hand up. Yeah, I, I apologize. Said, no, no, the two of them. I was letting the two of them go at each other. <laughs> um, I was enjoying it. Are they finished? Well, I, I just, I need before they go any further. Yeah. I, I want to know. I am uh, completely lost because I have two parts of the packet that are almost identical to each other, both dated February twenty third. And one is an appeal and one is a new application. But the appeal. I don't, and I don't know where in the packet Alfred and David are, are referring to. Okay, like, Bonnie, Bonnie, take the appeal and put it someplace. Only the appeal. No, That's all take, we're looking at. Bonnie, Bonnie, take the appeal, put it someplace on your desk that you can't reach and put it away. So this is just the special permit. The appeal yeah. is irrelevant. You don't want to look at the appeal. Okay, thank you. We're looking at. Okay, now what? Am, so now, now you're what looking. What part of this packet are we looking? Are they discussing so that I can? Look at it. None of it. None of it. The, hold on, David. The, let me get her back on track. The <sighs> packet that we you sent over that was sent over by the board of appeals is the application for a special permit for open bulk storage. In that special permit, there are descriptions on what the applicant on page two or page three um, specifically would like to do and describes what they're going to do on the property proposed. Right. That's what, right. David me, what David Meath, what David Rowell and Alfred were, was discussing, and I certainly do not want to put words in either one of their mouths, um, is the definition on, of contractor's yard in our zoning bylaws. That's Look what it up, they, Bonnie. That, that's uh -huh. what they were discussing. Okay, so this is okay. the 5413 that's referred to in the packet. Right. And, and so what they were doing is under definitions, contractor yard, if you've got your... Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, just in section two. It's, well, page four. Yes, yes, they got page four. Definitions, yeah. contractor's yard. And what they were doing was looking at the definition of that contractor's yard. Mm -hmm. and, they, and Alfred pointed out that parked wheeled equipment and some of the equipment they're using are excavators with tracks, not wheels. So therefore, do, does it basically, to David Rowell's point, does that fit in more to a definition of heavy industry, um, transport terminal, or something else of that nature? Um, and I, so David and Alfred, did I kind of nail that or did I miss something? No, I kind of got the gist of it, I think. Thank you, David. Yeah. No, so, I, buddy, I, I, that help you? Yeah. Okay. So we're we're basically looking at definitions and seeing whether, and just giving our opinion on whether the. I mean, I'm I'm well, still just, trying to get straight the role of the of uh, our role. So we're just see what it could be. in on whether we think the appeal is consistent with 
the definitions in the bylaws? Uh, no, I'm not sure we even want to go that far, Bonnie. I think what, so, no. so what let me give doing? you, let me give, okay. Let me give you, and I'm certainly not looking to lead the planning board members at this point, but after this discussion, we look at definitions, we look at other things. It could be a motion to send a letter to the Board of Appeals saying, um, in reviewing the application, the planning board feels that the board might want to also look at, Board of Appeals, might also want to look at a possible other fit, which could be industry heavy transport terminal or something else that we discuss as a definition, mm -hmm. um, as well as what the applicant has submitted open space bulk storage. Mm -hmm. We don't have, as the planning board, anything other than what the Board of Appeals sent over and the applicant submitted in their application. So when the Board of Appeals discusses with the applicant, they're gonna go into depth as to what they're going to do. They're not here today to make a present, the applicant attorney is not here to make a presentation nor would I probably even allow him to make a presentation as to the merits of the case. It's not our purview. Okay. <laughs> so all our purview is to say, okay, why don't you look at A, B, and C? You make a decision, Board of Appeals. Um, you might like what we did you know, on Cumberland Farms a couple of times is look at entranceway and say, and listen, if you're gonna get 40 foot tractor trailers in there, um, 18 wheel vehicles that maybe you need to have a better radius and a better opening as far as egress access. Um, those are the kind of things they're looking for, I think, as somewhere to look because we write, we've, we've written the bylaws for the most part. Donna Wellfleet has proved them. Um, but many times it goes to what was the intent of the bylaw when it was written? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to put my finger on anybody yet or talk to anybody yet that says, okay, when they talked about when contractor yards went in, probably I believe it was mid nineties. I wasn't on the board. That was my time I was off. I didn't pay any attention to what what was written or passed a town meeting, what was really discussed as to a contractor's yard. I mean, to me, I look at a contractor as a contractor and say, okay, what were they looking at plumbers, electricians, and um, framers? Were we really looking at earth moving equipment and, and road builders and things of that nature? I don't know, but that's the Board of Appeals decision they're gonna have to iron out. But I think now to back to David Rowell's point, is there something else that seems to maybe be, maybe fit in? Because our zoning bylaw reads, if it's not in the use table, it's not allowed unless the Board of Appeals can find something similar in nature, then they can address that issue or that use. If they can't Mr. find Chairman. something similar in nature, they got to turn it down. Mr. Chairman? Yes. This, this has been better. Um, look, the billing inspector issued a determination that the proposed use was a contractor's yard. Nobody has appealed that determination. The zoning board is not taking up whether or not it is a contractor's yard or whether or not a contractor's yard is permitted to write the district. The only issue in front of the building inspector is whether or not the storage of sand and bulk materials is in fact a separate use that requires a special permit or whether it's part of a contract. So all that's in front of the zoning board for that special permit application is if the board of appeals upholds the building inspector and says that the storage of topsoil, loam, gravel and, and sand is a separate use We've applied for a special permit. So all that's in front of your board is, do you want to provide 
commentary or feedback to the Board of Appeals with regard to a special use grant for bulk material storage as to how that may be accomplished safely and effectively. They're not looking for your board to provide your own personal opinions as to what the bylaws is, because that's, as the chair said, that's the, that's, that's the zoning board's opinion. But whether or not this is a contractor's yard is not in front of the zoning board. It's not a question. It's been determined by the building inspector. He's opined that. He's put it in writing. We've accepted that determination, and we've applied for the special permit if, in fact, they determine, the board determines, that that's a separate use. So I don't think contractor's yard is in front of this board. It's only what is it about bulk storage that needs to be managed and how should it be managed in terms of access movement within the site uh you know parking of vehicles etc thank you well mr chairman it does say in paul's response that it's likely that the proposed use it's not a definitive zoning interpretation from paul <clears throat> uh yes yeah, I just want to substantiate. I, I've heard Bunny Ha Ha ram on, but let's be real about this, okay? There's no determination that's what it is. This is all on the table. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I, I got a letter for a zoning determination from Paul. He said it's likely. I don't find no zoning determination in the package. Stop leading the board, Ben. Look, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, look, the role of this planning board has got to be circumscribed. It, this, this planning board is not allowed to go back and relitigate what it thinks it wrote 20 years ago. They can't do that. You know, you're being asked as a courtesy to provide commentary as to how best to affect the permit, not what you think the zoning board should do with regard to interpreting the zoning bill. I'm just trying to get your picture accurate, Ben. When you say that there was a termination, there hasn't been. So let's be a little bit more honest about it, would we please? David, I, I resent that remark. I, I applied for determination. I paid my $50. That's what he gave us. That was his determination. That's what he said. Because likely. That's the way I read it. You, you can, that's what David, it says. You, David, you can pick that word apart if you want, but that was Paul Fowler's zoning determination. Don't try to characterize it otherwise. Uh, Jerry? Could I, could yes. I ask? Uh, David, me. Um, I just, um, minute, look, I'm just looking at the narrative description from the applicant about how the property is going to be used. And then I'm reading the definition, as we've talked about, of contractor's yard, heavy industry, light industry, and oh, lastly, uh, transport terminal. And this is not, none of this is completely my area, but just looking at the meaning of the words and even some of the phrases it seems to me that all four of those things are something the Zoning Board of Appeals should look at based on what the narrative says. Correct. It may not be our jurisdiction, but if they want our opinion of this application, we have to be able to say something. I would agree with you, maybe, David. They have to maybe, look at all of it. I. conversation I had with Sharon chair was not specific to say only way in on bulk storage that wasn't that wasn't where the chair was going right. because if that was the case she would not the Board of Appeals would have sent it over to the planning board I believe in a different manner with a different statement. Please review this under the open, bulk storage open zoning bylaw in and of itself in the conversation. That was not the case. When she summarized to me, it was, would you review the use with the board members and see what their take is on the property with our zoning bylaws? Well, my take is what Nothing I done. my take is that those things seem to be very much at play here in terms of those four definitions. Okay, which let me get it. Which one are you? Just for my edification, keep this going. What do you? Which ones are you saying? I'm saying that there. It seems likely to me, based on this three-paragraph description of the use of the property, that this could be 
simultaneously a contractor's yard, heavy industry, light industry, and transport um, terminals. Or, or what about, what about bulk, bulk storage? storage? Bulk, yeah, okay, sorry, bulk storage too. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Bonnie, thank you, David. Bonnie, did you have a question? I, yeah, I think that, I think this recent uh, intervention, answered it. David answered it. Okay. Um, other members, Olga, you've been silent. Um, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, very good. Comment. Um, Alfred? Well, I think that the fact that the zoning board has asked us to, to look at this, I mean, we are not a, we're not to make a determination on this, but I think we, sh we they're asking us for assistance in understanding some of the zoning bylaws um, or interpretations of it. And we're only giving them our opinion of what the zoning bylaw says according to what the applicant submitted to them. I mean, I don't think it's unrealistic if they've asked us to look at everything in our zoning book to decide to give them multiple options so that they can make a better decision. And I think that by coming up with five possible scenarios, because I didn't look at the terminal, the transport terminal until this evening, um, you know, I think that we have certainly started to do our job for what they've asked us to do. We, they didn't ask us to approve or deny this permit. They asked us to assist them in what we thought it would fall into, is my understanding. And I think that the applicant picked a category, um, which may be correct, may not, I don't know, because I don't sit on the zoning board. But I think that if you read these things closely, we should send our opinion to the zoning board so that they have um, something that, even if they disagree with us, at least at that point, they will look into it and make a better decision for the town of Wellfleet. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm with you. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to refer the board to the to Paul Fowler's determination as permit referral document dated February 22. He, he, it, it's in the package, the permit referral. And, and what David, what you were referring to was a previous email with Paul before I made the formal request for determination. But his well, I, I didn't get that part then. Okay. I don't have that. Well, it's part of the zoning package. I mean, what happened was just for the board's edification, I sent an email over to Paul on February 1st with a description of the project after talking with him. He sent me back an email that said it's likely that it's a contractor's yard. He then, I, I then, what he required was more information, which I submitted, and then he issued what's called a permit referral, dated February 22nd, in which he required that a special permit be applied for for bulk storage open. That's the only relief that he required, which means that, based on the presentation to him, he determined that the only relief required to undertake this activity was a special permit for bulk storage open. Now, and possibly light industry. Wait, I, there's no, no he did, February no. 22nd letter in our packet. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Industry light, fabrication. You're right. Yep. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Thank you, David. Um, now, for this board, you know, you have to remember, look, in this town, under your charter, the, the planning board advances bylaws, and then the zoning board interprets those bylaws if there's an appeal made from a determination of the building inspector. There's no appeal of his determination of what relief was required, and so you know, each of these members may have an opinion, which sounds to me like it's an opinion that's being drawn tonight as to what may be involved in the zoning board. But I think the, the planning board should be very careful not to just make snap judgments about what they think the zoning bylaw meant at a certain point in time. When you're asked for an opinion, for example, a development of significant impact, you're not asked to provide your interpretation of the zoning code, but to provide guidance to the zoning board with regard to the, to the practical application of the permit. And so I think what the board needs to be doing here is looking at the site plan and saying, okay, based on the use that's being presented, the application being presented, what is it about that application that we think we can help the zoning board with? Not substitute yourself for the zoning board or the building inspector for what you think the zoning code means. I think you're, you're, you're walking into a dangerous territory there. 
I, I still think that we ought to be able to suggest to the zoning board to take a look at the five definitions that we have been that have been mentioned. And there's certainly things on the site plan we can talk about as well. I don't, I feel we have an obligation to give our opinion. I mean, why even discuss this as an agenda item if we can't do that? I don't think it should be discussed as an agenda item. There's nothing in the zoning code that provides for the planning board to be, to be opining in the context of a zoning application what the building inspector meant or didn't mean or what the zoning bylaw says. I mean, you know, I, it's on, I well, appreciate clearly, and I'm going to go one and, step and further. It's on the agenda mind. because the zoning board asked us to look at the application to them. They asked us to do that. That's why it's on the agenda. I feel like you are working hard to steer this conversation and we ought to be able to continue with our conversation. Well, and finally, Mr. Chairman, the zoning board hasn't even met on this yet. They haven't even opened the public hearing on this yet. I'm not sure how they could even have voted to send this to your board. Now that's not your fault, but I'm just raising that as an issue. Well, it's the same, it's the same way, Ben, that um, I think on a significant impact that uh, before they open the meeting, they send it over, open and then close it, send it over to us on development of significant impact. Um, and we give them their input. So when they open the meeting, they've got some input on it. Um, I, I concur that this is out of the ordinary, but I don't think that even though the zone, our zoning bylaws doesn't require them to send to us, I think that boards can talk to each other if they have problems. Um, you know, for example, this particular project doesn't trigger significant impact because it's not parking 10 vehicles right well that we know of you know what this particular project is parking density wise a hell of a lot more than 10 vehicles an excavator just one excavator takes up two parking spaces one 40 foot tractor trailer or 18 wheeler takes up two parking spaces and from what six of their smart I, cars in the uh, in your application, just their equipment without even a single employee working triggers more than ten parking spaces that would be normally in a retail location. So, you know, I, I think that we're not advocating or intend to advocate again, as I said, whether or not we feel they should or should not grant the permit was simply helping them say, listen, you may want to look at some other definitions to see if they fit better. You may want to review commercial district objectives. You may, may want to redo, redo or re look at permitted uses. You may want to look at, and we haven't even got to it yet, um, the 35 foot setback that was destroyed. Um, I'm sure they want us to weigh in and say, hey, how do we handle that? We do it with plantings and, and stuff and bonds on subdivision control. So I think they're looking for help. They're going to make the decision. You're going to have to prevent yeah. the case to them to say, listen, I, I did it under open space, open um, storage, bulk storage as the building inspector requested. But you know what? The building inspector's only been here three weeks. He, he doesn't know the zoning bylaws like the members that you're sitting with right now who do. Who I, Mr. Chairman, I'm, in, I'm telling you, Paul worked through this very carefully. I, I, you know, based on the comments I'm hearing tonight, I'm listening to a planning board that is coming through the bylaw. That's what I'm hearing right now. And so we're I- doing what we were asked to do, Ben. No, I understand. And look, I, look, I appreciate the board hearing this and you have no choice but to open this hearing and, and to do what you're doing. I'm just trying to guide the board into understanding that you know its, it's role is not as an interpreter of the zoning bylaw. That's Paul's job, you know. It, it, your role is to assist the zoning board in, in, in the practical aspect of the application. And that being said, you know, I'm more combative than usual. I appreciate you all being here and I, I appreciate the fact that you can't not respond to this request. So, okay. okay. You know, and take, yeah. With all due respect, I'm gonna take that at this point. I'm gonna reel it back into the planning board. We will do what we intend to do. 
you've presented your case at this point and we're just going to proceed. Bonnie, sure. thank you. Yeah, I mean, if we are kind of generally opining about the intensity of use of this plot of land and the fact that they will need to restore the plantings and have the setback, the narrative seems to give leeway to have an enormous amount of equipment on that, on that plot of land. So I guess, you know, I don't know what, what, if anything, our opinion should be, but it does seem, as you look at the list of equipment that, that GFM uses, and then the paragraph that talks about the types of equipment that might be there, you know, this is, sounds to me like um, extremely intensive. Well, so we, that, we, 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 yeah. we're not, again, I got to come back. We're not here to, to hear the merits on whether or not right, okay. permit should be granted or not granted. So we're, we're just doing definite, we're just saying, please consider these five definitions in your determination. Well, you know, maybe I'm going to have to take the lead here a little bit more. Um, you know, we've, we've mentioned bulk storage. We've mentioned contractor's yard. We've mentioned industry heavy um, transport terminal. Um, I also had, had made a comment to write down to say, listen, please revisit the definition of commercial district. Because I'm reading commercial district that it's, it's, it's a district that was created to provide for small or moderate scale business development and to avoid the creation of hazard or congestion. So I'm not advocating that we tell them how to read that paragraph. I'm Just read it. I'm suggesting yeah. that David, David Rao just said is maybe the planning board simply says, listen, in looking over the case, here are the four definitions that we feel you might want to look at. You might want to revisit the def again the permitted use um, uses 5.2 since hazard and congestion, noise, vibration. Again, we're not here to discuss mm -hmm. the merits of whether they grant it or don't grant it. We're here to simply Just say to listen, look at. That use appears to be maybe a little bit more heavy than just open bulk storage. It is abutting the national seashore on one side. It is abutting the residential neighborhood directly behind it with probably not less than 10 feet off the lot line for the residential area. Jerry? Boy. Yep. Um, I, I get the distinction we're going to make. And so I'd like to suggest, I'd like to question first. Um, in another case that we were looking at, completely different situation, we were given a review, a written review of the kind of public safety uh, access issues by the police chief and the fire department. Are they going to participate in doing that for this situation, given its situation and where it's located? Okay, the only thing I know about that, David, is uh, David Mead, is that the <clears throat> there was, a, and Ben will correct me if I'm wrong, there was an application submitted for a curb cut to the DPW on Old Wharf Road for access. That curb cut was denied. Okay. I believe, certainly, within the purview of the application to the Board of Appeals, that a notice has gone out to the police department, fire department, to weigh in on the project. So they would hopefully Jerry, be giving their opinion to the Zoning Board of Appeals. 
Yes, because they're the permit granting authority. They wouldn't right. necessarily right. give it to us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. There's well, also. Go ahead. Um, go yeah, ahead. David. David Fox through you, Chair Jerry. I did talk with the um, Lieutenant, uh, the Deputy Chief of the Police Department. I guess the Fire Department and them have weighed in on it. I don't know if there's a formal letter, but they didn't seem too thrilled with it and sort of followed the lead of the DPW. But I don't know if they have a written opinion that exists as okay. to such. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Jerry, uh, uh, David, I'd like to correct David. Um, Michael Hurley, who's the chief of police, has submitted an email to Chris Bates and the board, um, including Rebecca, um, on Monday, March 8th, and I'll read it to the board, if, if, if I may. Certainly. Okay, it says, hi, Chris. After reviewing the attached information, I do not see any issues with the Route 6 curb cut from this site. It appears to be far enough south from the Old Wharf Route 6 entrance to be of any issue. My main concern with this site was the proposed curb cut onto Old Wharf Road, which was not, which does not seem to be in this request. If you have any other questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. So, I got yeah, something different brought, today, Ben. Yeah, they're being brought in. They're being brought in as okay. as they would on any permit. Okay. Uh, DP um, State DOT will will be brought in for curb cut. Um, at this point, they don't have a curb cut. Um, it's been rescinded. Um, so again, we're, we're just looking at trying to get them some more information to give them a little bit more guidance as to what the planning board feels. Um, so let's see if I can move this along with part of this response to the Board of Appeals is that we asked them to review as the permit was, as the um, application was submitted, the bulk storage open, contractor's yard definitions, industry heavy, transport terminal, and I think those are the four definitions that we would like them to look at. Uh, and, and industry storage. light as well. Indus I, I, no? Yeah, if you want to put industry light, fine. Yeah. Um, I'm also suggesting that they review, which they will, um, but it doesn't hurt to just put it in there, the definition of commercial district. Um, and 5.2 permitted use schedule should be reviewed. Um, so if we can put that aside and we're all agreeable to it, I'd like to move on to say that, okay, the, the curb cut at the present time has been rescinded by the state. So I'm sure the applicant is going to resubmit the curb cut that was granted to the property when they asked for a special permit for storage was a completely, in my mind, but I, I do not know anything about it. it. It didn't come to the planning board, was addressed by DO, DOT as probably normal vehicle traffic, cars going in and out with a couple moving trucks. That curb cut showing on the plan at a reduced plan that I can't really read that well. I would much rather have seen a blow up of it. Um, but it is up near that foundation, which is 50 feet off the road. But that curb cut is really, in my mind, designed for vehicle traffic, cars, small trucks, that type of thing, is not geared to 18 wheel trucks or 40 foot trailers with excavators on them to make the turn into that property near that foundation onto the rest of the property because the bulk of that storage property as showing on the plan is to the other side. The foundation is to the south and the rest of the storage and everything else is to the north. So there is a tremendously, in my mind, difficult transition 
off Route 6 onto the property by that foundation, by the, it's showing on the plan that I can barely read, storage container area. I don't know how you get around in that access, around that foundation, by the storage with 40 foot trailers and 18 wheel vehicles. Now, because it's not a significant impact specifically, but to me, that's, a, that's something that I think the planning board with layout of subdivisions, access and everything else might want to say, listen, the location of that curb cut may have been fine for a storage facility, but with no building on top of it, with just an open foundation, with storage containers so close, it doesn't appear to be a safe, good movement of vehicles on the site with the amount of time and energy they're going to go in and out of the location. So I think that's something that maybe yeah. the board wants to look at and say, okay, now I got a big, if he will, I don't know if he will or not, Alfred to weigh in and says, because I know Alfred has a 30, 40 foot trailer looking at that plan. I mean, Alfred, have you got a better viewpoint as to? Well, to be honest with you, Jerry. Yeah. By the size of the plan, I have no idea where anything's really going. Okay, I mean, with, with, first of all, I was looking for a microfiber glass because I can't read part of this, um, even with reading glasses on, and I borrowed ones that are stronger than mine. Where is the curb cut actually going to be on this plan? The curb cut, and again, Ben, you can weigh in, but the curb cut as shown looks like it's in the exact location that it was originally designed and approved, which would be in the northeast corner in that vacant, clear white space about 15 feet off the southeast corner of the property sideline where you see a diagonal line off Route 6. Um, it's the only that place that's not shaded. Where the curb cut is. Could, could you Whoops. just say which map you're looking at? Is it the one in the, is it the one of several ones in the appeal? It's the back, or is it the that one there, it's the back. It's the back one. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm the one that has, assuming, I'm assuming. The one that has C1 on it, down on the um, okay. right hand sure. corner. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what it is, Alfred. I don't see anything else. And I know that that's where there was a berm built. And mm. now that uh, Ben read the police report um, from the chief saying that it was to the far south of the access on the Old Wharf, I believe, in fact, that is what they're indicating they're going to use as either that size or request a larger size, but that's where they're hoping to come in as far as the curb cut goes, I would assume. And that's assumption because it's not before us, we just got this plan, that's all. A very no. poor. So all, all the more reason why it just fits in with the logic of saying there are things that we don't know about this plan or can't read, but that just goes on the list of items we'd like the zoning board to look at, period. Correct, yeah. Correct. Yep. So, well, I, 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 I think, would think that. Alfred, go ahead. I think you would have to use a radius for the size of the vehicles that were going into the thing. I'm not so sure. There's a you standard went, for that, Alfred. It's no, 50 no, feet, anyhow. I, I realize that, David. But even if you cut the corner, you know, my problem is if you went in through the non-shaded area and you would go to the right to get into the larger portion of the yard. You've got a storage, is it a storage container area or it's, something? Yeah, storage containers, yeah. Um, yeah. 
you're not you're not going to swing right and then swing left again to get in the yard, in my opinion. But yeah. I don't have a scale to go to this to understand all of it. I mean, I yeah, you know, you might get in there once or twice. I mean, if you ask me to put a boat there, I might get it there, but that doesn't mean I got it in there well. Yeah, but you got to if you're if, what I'm, and I think it's a simple simple point to have the boy look at it, but I'm looking it's at very tight. Yeah, I'm looking at a at a 18 wheeler because I know that they have 18 wheelers coming in that location. They're going to want to get off six quickly to come in that location, try and make because it's only 50 feet um, to that foundation that they've got to make either go directly west around the foundation and come out the other side. I think it's something that they seri seriously have to look at to either relocate, relocate it or make a better use of the property without the foundation. But I think it's something the Board of Appeals from the Planning Board says, listen, yeah. we really don't have enough information to weigh in on the layout, but it looks awful difficult and awful tight. Um, so Jerry, that that being said, would section six point three point one five egress is a standalone issue, and that deals with some of the sight lines and whatnot. It's the section right after development of significant impact, but it's a standalone section regarding egress that they can look at too, and see if that's pertinent to any of the sight lines or travel patterns. Where is that, David? Uh, it's six point page twenty-eight, six point three point one five. It's oh, got it. yeah. it's a, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, just read that and see. Although it references number of trips, some of that information might be helpful to them anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But until so that's that's that one, um, and the only other thing. is and i know the board of appeals is going to address it but i i think that our help in in this might be or our input might be a little helpful <clears throat> obviously there seemed to be a problem with destruction of the 35 foot buffer along Route 6 that was destroyed, that is per our zoning bylaw that should not have been touched. Yep. They do have a right to change that, diminish it down to 20%, but normally that's done with the Board of Appeals on a special permit, not done and then go in and say, thank you very much, but what can we do? I think we might want to weigh in and say, listen, since it appears, and it's, I think it will need to be somewhat subtle, but I think it's since it appears that there was substantial clearing on what was to be restricted um, buffer, that replanting should be necessary and as the planning board does with in subdivision, they might want to look at it and say, when they're doing their planting, they might want to get a bond and have that bond posted that um, would guarantee for X amount of time that those plantings live and are taken care of so they don't just plant them and die. Um, yeah. Yeah. They can do as they wish with it, but I think those are the kind of things that they might be looking for to say, well, we, we don't deal with this. Planning board does all the time. That's what we do. Okay. Jerry, there's, there's, another, there's another thing because many of the members that are on the board probably weren't there, there for this case. But when they did Lyle Butt's boat storage yard on Route 6, they limited his use area. They defined it by the setback line. So that concentrated his ability for all his storage and use of that property, his auxiliary boat storage yard, to it had to be out of the setbacks. 
that is something the board could consider for this property as well. They did it, I believe, at Sunflowers, too. So those are two cases where they've broadened, they've pushed the use back into the center of the property, and they've either said either a no use or replant a broader area. And those have been two examples that have been done in the past in Wellfleet. They might want to look at that because this use, the storage goes right up to the lot line almost in some of them, but they could, should they decide to, restrict it to the set, the building setback line, which they have done in the past. That's good to know, David, and I agree with you that they ought to look at that. Um, how, how would you... Phrase that? <laughs> yeah, thanks, David. <laughs> yeah, how would... Well, the, the use of the property is that the, the, for lack of a better word, the work limit area is the building setback line. So that passive use of bulk storage can't be in the setbacks if you, know, you treat it like a building. What you got for setbacks, that's your use area. You can't put bulk storage in that setback, so to speak. <clears throat> I, I, okay, I get you, but now we're, we're getting into... I'd no, like it's, I'm make... just saying there's two cases that have done that. They don't have to do that, but they can look at it. Right. And I'm. I'm... Uh, Jerry would show them a mechanism. Yeah. Giving I'm... them a mechanism. I'm trying to give them a wording to say you may, in Board of Appeals, you may want to review some of your decisions as to what you've done with um, use of setbacks for the use of setbacks. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Activity liberal, in the setbacks. Without getting, without getting into justifying the permit, whatever they want to do. I mean, indirectly, normally the reduction, and this is for the Board of Appeals to decide, but I mean, normally in the reduction of, of Route 6 um, buffer, they allow a good amount of clearing on retail locations and lower plantings because the retail needs the business siting to exist. Right. In yeah. this but this isn't a retail of, operation. In this kind of atmosphere, the complete opposite is necessary. Right. The, Correct. the buffer should never have been touched because you want to hide as much as potentially possible if you're going to bulk storage and have heavy equipment from the Route 6 view, as well as from Old Wharf Road residential entrance. So it's almost a reversal situation is most cases on Route 6, they wanna do some lower clearing. In this case, you wanna get that clear, you wanna get that planting back to yeah. break up so you don't see what the hell's going on in the inside of this. So, well, that was the intent of those two other cases, I do believe, and they can look okay. into that. All right. Okay. So I think, I think we basically discussed it. Is Jerry? there anything else yeah. without trying to get something quickly drawn up here? Is there anything else that member, any member felt that we didn't touch? Jerry, I just want to be sure. I think we've touched everything, but um, Bonnie mentioned just briefly a while ago, I think, the, or maybe you did, the idea of is the use overly intensive? They might want to look at that. We have that on our list. I, I'm not sure I would recommend going there. That's, I think. David Mead, in pointing out the uses that we did or the definitions, yeah, and reiterating the definition of commercial district, as well as permitted uses in section 5.2, I think we've, we've given them a clear path to say, which they would do, they're going to do anyway. I mean, I, yeah. I Remember, you've got two ex-members of the planning board on there, yeah. you've got experienced yeah. members on there. Um, I don't know who's going to end up sitting on it, but they're going to scrutinize it. Some of the things probably they're way ahead of us on, 
but yeah. in reviewing the definition of commercial district in reviewing the permitted uses um, wording, they're seeing that they really, there is a need to review not only this particular property, but its relationship to abutting properties, right. as well as what those abutting properties are zoned for. Right. So yeah. if the use they feel is too intense, based on neighbors that you've got 10 feet away, and you're not just storing apples and oranges, but you're storing excavators that are starting up and you're fueling and you're bringing 40 foot tractor trailers, there's a substantial magnitude of noise and stuff that they're going to have to look at. Yeah, it is okay. not in a normal retail trade business. And Jerry, you mentioned earlier, okay, I, I get that, that um, you thought they ought to take a look at the parking spaces issue. We have that on our list for them. No, I think we, I think David, that's a good point. I think since we don't, since we it don't appears, know. and I reread significant impact, that this is a, whether it's open storage, whether it's industry, whether it's transport, whether it's even contractor yards, it's a different animal than regular retail vehicle right. traffic like Cumberland right. Farms. Right. I mean, it's easy to say, okay, that's a vehicle. You got to create X amount of parking spaces. The parking is a completely different kind of animal here. I think they, instead of numbers, they almost have to look at the maneuverability on the lot. Yeah. Or what they want to do to, to, move, to move on and off the property on the property and off that property in a manner that doesn't require five and six point turns with an 18 wheeler with a residential neighbor right next door. And every time you back up, the noise goes off because they're backing up because they're commercial vehicles. Right. Where if a car backs up, you don't hear a damn thing. Yeah, and not to mention the fact that they just take up more space once they're not even moving. Exactly. So yeah. they may want to review the interior. Yeah. Um, uh, Jerry, um, one other yeah. thing, I think, um, is there a, um, and again, I'm sure there are lots of people are thinking about this, but this occurs to me that there's kind of a public safety review that seems reasonable to do given the congestion and the size of the vehicles in the residential neighborhood and all of that. Is there a, is there a, place that that happens they would that would fall that would fall under the board of appeals hearing because of the permit granting authority right okay that would fall under them saying do they want to do a traffic study do they yeah. want to do um do they want to get involved with dot um to yeah. make sure that is dot going to require for example in the acceleration lane um Okay, but I would. That kind I, of thing. But no, I think that's that that's it, that's more in there. Right, but I mean, all these things are theirs. But could, yeah. we could also suggest that we we uh, encourage them to look carefully at public safety issues, for example. Which I'm I know, just from the neighborhood is always is is going to be on the top of the agenda. I'm right. Sure. Right. I mean, that's that's. But I think it's, it's even if we know something's going to happen, I think it's useful to have our point of view on the record and our okay. recommendations for what they should look at. So in summation, because we've got to get, yeah. I want to move this on because we're about we beat it up enough, um, discussed it enough. And since we're back, because we've got a light bar. You still awake? Rebecca? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. I'm listening. Oh, oh it took her, it took her a little while to come back <laughs> in here. Because it's St. Patrick's Day and I'm Irish. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, am I going to hear about this for a long time? All you right. Have no idea, sir. You have no idea. I have, I have no doubt that you will make up for lost time. Okay, I'll try and get this done. Um, does anybody else want to attempt to give her a bullet to write down? Um, I would. 
Okay, um, buddy. You want to give it a I step? was looking at egress because that that's a and it it looks to me like things on Route Six need acceleration deceleration lanes. That's DOTs. DOT make DOT in granting the curb cut for the use will determine. Um, generally speaking, it's in our bylaw too, is it, Jerry? It's in our bylaw, not just what? DOT. Acceleration and deceleration lanes. That's in our bylaw. It's under egress. That's what Bonnie's referring to. So they should just look at that whole section. Don't yeah, put it solely on DOT. Three one five has a table. Yeah. So I was just looking at that because the maximum driveway width is, you know, um, you know, just all that. I don't yeah, know. I mean, it, they can. It, it take. It has to take the width of a, you know. Uh, the uh, whatever the size okay. of the but, all are. right but to read <laughs> all right I, 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 if I, if that was if I, that's I see, I see where you're going and you can you can very easily if you would like in this re, in this letter you can say you may want to read view 6.3.15 however in reviewing three just so all the members know here just looking and reading quickly, 6.3.15, which I did earlier, your opening paragraph is you've got to have more than 200 trips per day. Mm -hmm. this, this particular property is not going to hit 200 trips per day. Well, we don't necessarily know that, do we now? Well, that's, that's fine, but don't hang your head on the fact that they're going to have to No, do no, it. I'm not. I'm just, they got to look no, at it all. If we're going to look at it all, I look at it all. I know, David, but I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> Looking more towards Bonnie as a new member here and saying, okay, just because you're reading in that line at the bottom, acceleration, deceleration lane, uh -huh. that would only appeal uh, or apply if it was determined that there were 200 plus trips a day going in right. and out of that property. It's in and out of the property, not going by the property. So okay. you would, there is. Okay. They'd be out of, they would be, they would need a site so much bigger if they were doing anywhere near those trips a day <laughs> and the site couldn't take it in the first place. So I, I think you could put it there if you want to, but certainly don't think that that is a serious issue because it's not going to trip it. So, okay. So I'm going to come back. Does anybody else want to give this a stab or do you, mm. how do you want to do this? Oh, I can try a bullet point. Okay, try a bullet point. Okay, um, I'm just gonna do shorthand here. Um, one, parking spaces and movement within the property. Two, the, the zoning definitions that we mentioned before, bulk storage, et cetera. All right, go, go through them just for Bonnie's oh, Okay, day. yep. Bulk storage open, contractor's yard, heavy industry and light industry and transport um, transport what's the other one uh, terminal. terminal terminal okay look at we'd like them to look at those um number four um the police and fire review i know that's already being done but i you know why not go on the record that it's important that's fine uh, number five same comment about this public safety as an issue, they should look at that. Number six is uh, they should look at the intensity of use. Number seven. Uh, okay, let me chime in. Look at intensity of use, comma. In particular, look at definition of commercial district and 5.2 permitted uses. Okay, good. That's a good way like of combining. That. I was gonna just get to commercial district, perfect. Okay. Um, then I would have um, look at the curb cut issue. Then um, look at the issue of setback use by the applicant. And I think we already get egress definition under intensity of use. That would be it. All right, I'm gonna add one more. Um, in reviewing the 
commercial district buffer zone on Route 6. Review, review replanting. May, no. And you may want to consider yeah. not only replanting, but you may want to consider um, as per planning board um, experience, having the applicant post a bond to make sure the work is done in accordance with what you're looking for. Well, and your point earlier, Jerry, that, it, that it, um, the plantings and screening continues to be effective and alive. Yes. Or, or right. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Anything about abutters that are residential and the National Seashore to be taken into consideration? No, I, I, I think that aspect is something that number one, your abutters are gonna do and number two, you're gonna do. But I think the definition of commercial district along with the permitted use of 5.3, <clears throat> Five point two is quite clear that, it, if I may, because it does yep. say whether it's, you know, the same or an adjoining district. So the seashore yeah, is its district, and the residential is its district. So I think that we've covered that through five point two. Yeah, that's Olga. what I thought I did. Yeah, that's why I put it on there. Thank you, Albert. Yeah. I knew we'd, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's good. I, I knew there was a reason I was going to look it up, but that was that was it. Good. Anything else? Okay, um, I'm just going to ask if anybody wants to make a motion to have Rebecca draw that letter. And do you want to see it before we send it over to the Board of Appeals? Do all members That'd be nice. See it? Yeah, it's a complicated yeah. enough letter in a way that I think it would be great, Jerry, if we could look at it. All right, so whoever makes the motion in the motion have that I think David uh, had the motion, didn't he? Yeah, okay. We'll we'll take it as David made the motion. We'll have a second. Um, he, well before he, David make the motion, do you want that in the motion, David? Yes. Okay. That it be yes. sent out to all members before going to Board of Appeals for approval? Yes. Okay. Anyone want a second? I'll second. David Beach, your body. Thank you. <laughs> their, yeah. meeting is, yeah. their meeting is March 25th. Yeah, so I will we do may, my we best get to this. get it out to them. Well, ASAP. you're just giving me a kick, so uh, I still. Uh, you have no time. idea. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, thank you all very much. Ben, thanks for your input. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jerry. Thank you, everybody. Um, as far as next meeting, I Hi, think ben. it shapes up to be April. Hi, Rebecca. My God. Is that April 7th and first meeting, Rebecca? Uh, let me just double check, but yes, I think so. Well, I'm looking at the scale, I'm looking at it, so it's the seventh, yes. Yes, it is. All right, so the next meeting is the 7th. Um, we, I don't know what will be on the agenda at that point, so I'll let you know. Nothing. Uh, yeah, there may not be anything. If <laughs> I'm just I'll, kidding. I'll, 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 I'll give hey, you a Gary? David, please. I'm sorry, but um, what about the lot clearing topic on our agenda? I'm not saying I want to talk about it now. I'm just saying it's something that we yeah. did anybody well the reason why I, I i saw nothing in the packet that anybody sent anything in on it so you really yeah know. helen's uh helen sent in the the relevant um some of the relevant bylaws and that's sh that's in your packet mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I, yeah. I, all right let's let's put it on the next it's not going to get on time meeting anyway so let's let's put it on the next agenda yeah, I mean, I think it's an important topic. I'd like to discuss it, I day, but not tonight. So. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Um, Olga. I, I wrote something at the last minute about getting opinion from town council about the ADU. Um, there were some questions. You reported back to us about your conversations um, I remember Michael DeVasto 
challenging some of your interpretations. And I thought now that there's a new policy about getting legal opinions from town council, I offered three questions that I would like town council to follow up on and maybe get to the bottom of, you know, new uh, construction. I, I, okay, and I, I agree with you, but it's not on the mm -hmm. agenda. Okay, but I, it's new business. I'm suggesting, would you like me to submit it for the new next meeting? Would be on, new business would mean we'd have to take it up at, at the next meeting, Yeah. put it on the agenda. Okay, so. I, um, new business doesn't mean you can talk about something. Okay, no. I will put it on the agenda if that's okay, or yeah. request that it be on the agenda. Okay, that's fine. Good. Anything else? All right, seeing none, thank you all very much. I appreciate it. I know it was a tough night, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Like, no. Good night. Nope. Time, Good sir. Welcome, Rebecca. Goodbye, Mr. Parents. <laughs> Go have a drink. Seems like you are not I'm on my way, kid. Thank you.